Since the dawn of time, man has been curious. And for almost as long, the Vibes Broadcast Network has sought the truth. Investigate. Discuss. Explore. Okay. Maybe in other episodes, but this one is just... Listen to the Vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And I have here the lovely Miss Naomi Grossman. She is an actress. I mean, she's been in movies like Fear and um, probably best known as her as Pepper in American Horror Story. And I'll have to say, they have to really do some makeup on you to make you look like that because you're a very pretty lady. And I appreciate your time. And this is all about you. So tell us a little bit about you um oh gosh well i feel like i need to correct you only because uh you said fear and it's actually fear ink so my apologies. no worries my apologies. no 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 worries but i just don't want people going and googling and and being very no, frustrated you're <laughs> correct i'm i'm, I'm sorry <laughs> uh, no no worries um gosh i don't know where to begin um <laughs> <laughs> an open book so uh you know if you put me in a direction and i'll talk your ear off but well, well let's find out where you grew up okay i'm originally from denver okay. um uh i uh yeah i was born and raised in denver um uh, went to Argentina as an exchange student in high school, which uh, was really informed a lot of my life after that, uh, interestingly enough. Uh, from there, I went to Chicago, where I was a theater major at Northwestern. Uh, and four years of Chicago winners, and I was done. I came straight to LA. Um, uh, I had a boyfriend at the time. Of course, that like lasted like five minutes, uh, but he's kind of the reason I went west as opposed to east, uh, where most theater kids would go, you know, to New York. Um, but uh, yeah, he was a uh, he was a PA on Friends, which at the time was like as close to being, you know. Uh, uh, Steven Spielberg as you could get like oh my god you get Jennifer Aniston coffee like holy crap <laughs> like you've basically made it you know anyway that's how I saw it so in any case he got me out here which was a good thing um and my, but that was that was a long time ago I've been here ever since and um yeah it's home now what can I say it's uh it's 77 degrees outside and in December. I mean, I have absolutely no um, complaints. <laughs> oh, well, we, we're getting the same weather here in Austin. So yeah, it's kind of crazy though. It's like 30 something degrees at night and then it'll be 70, almost 80 in the afternoon. Right. Lo and behold, but okay. I have to ask you, were you drawn to like horror type movies or do you were just kind of brought into that world? Yeah, I just I joke that I like slipped and fell into a horror um, was never drawn to horror per se, but I was always drawn to big characters. So, um, you know, it's interesting, like in my sort of time here in L.A., I any and even before that. Uh, in Chicago, for example, I was in um, some shows, uh, some kind of underground shows um, called uh, Cannibal Cheerleaders on Crack, <laughs> and and Shannon Doherty shoots a porno. I played Tori Spelling, Spelling, of course, um, but uh, you know, really kind of over the top character work, uh, kind of the, the kind of like the kind of stuff you'll see on SNL. You know what I mean? Like just big. Oh, bigger than life characters. And, um, and that's really what I honed. Like I, I spent a lot of time at the Groundlings Theater here, uh, which is um, kind of a, for a while, it was really just sort of this fat, like SNL factory, like, you know, 
Phil Hartman, Lisa Kudrow, uh, Kristen Wiig, Melissa McCarthy, Will Ferrell, I mean, Elvira, mm, uh, uh, Pee Wee Herman, uh, the, 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 Pat. Like pretty much everyone but Toon says the cat came out of the groundlings, you know? So, and that is, that's sort of how I fancied myself. I was the, you know, two to three minute sketch comedy girl. Um, I have a, an amazing wig collection and I've got all the, you know, voices and I can, you know, really transform myself, which is what you need to do if you're playing um, five to 10 different characters on a Saturday night in live TV. And that's really what I always sort of dreamt of doing. Um, course that didn't really happen for me however those the same skill set obviously lends itself very well to um you know pepper um you know it's interesting because i swear i've played every character under the sun um except or, or i should say prior to a uh, horror story i'd pretty much done every wackadoo character you could possibly conceive of and this was just like oh yes of course i'm that's going to be the the role for me like <laughs> i've done everything else you know i kind of um and when i say i've done everything else i i mean listen no one had seen me prior to pepper but um you know there was a you know, a hundred people every Sunday night that would see me at the groundlings or, you know what I mean? A, a, we probably only got maybe 15 to 20 at the <laughs> at uh, cannibal cheerleaders on crack. But um, anyway, you get the idea. Like I, I, I often say that um, comedy and horror, they're, they're really, they, they, um, they work well together. They're kind of simpatico. Like you can, um, like when you think about it, some of these horror icons, like, you know, Freddy Krueger, I mean, he's kind of hilarious when you think about it. Like, yeah. like he, I, again, he's like a big character, like burnt face with like grazer gloves. You know, yeah. there's, there's nothing terribly grounded or realistic about it, thank God. Um, and so, you know, I think Pepper was kind of one of those characters where I was able to bring a lot of my, you know, uh, improv comedy chops. Um, it was just a matter of really just sort of dialing me down. Like I'd always sort of gone all the way up, you know, uh, for the laugh. But mm -hmm. this was sort of a matter of um, reading the room, you know, sensing the tone of the show and, and matching my energy to it. So um you know <laughs> let's face it i'm working alongside you know jessica lang and yeah. and sarah paulson and kathy bates and some real heavy hitters and so you know you want to <laughs> you want to play in their sandbox not not the other way around so yeah, yeah but it's uh it's it's interesting how <laughs> you know comedy and drama are not always all that far off like you know that same fall down the stairs can is hilarious when it's a banana peel and you know the person gets up and you know woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, you know but it's not funny if they die you know what i mean like so yeah. you really kind of <laughs> it's how does that prat fall go <laughs> like how does it how does it uh, all end up <laughs> Yeah, well, your character in American Horror Story, and I mean, granted, you didn't have a lot of dialogue, but you still brought a lot to that character. And because of, of that, I mean, I, th I think that takes a lot of talent when you are given less actual speaking parts, but still be able to, you know, convey some feeling in something from a character. And from that, did you find that you got more attention from say like uh, other directors and, and projects? Um, yes, certainly. I mean, like I said, I wasn't on people's radar when I, when I was, you know, performing for a hundred people down on Melrose Avenue at the groundlings, I only had so many eyeballs on me, you know, yeah. whereas uh, horror stories got just like, I mean, how many million people tune in every Wednesday? Like it's, you know, so obviously I was able to garner some attention, especially, I mean, 
my goodness. Like, for example, IMDb, which is, as you know, the database that sort of ranks one's popularity online. Mm -hmm. I I went from like 93,000, that, that is my star meter, which um, basically implies like I have a pulse in Hollywood. Like, but that's about it, you know? Uh, and I shot up that very first week, I went from 93,000 to 3,000. And then, and so meaning I had that many people Googling me, like, who is that little creepy creature that I just saw on my TV set, you know? And then from the week, the next week, that's probably even more remarkable because I went from 3,000 to 300. At that point, I'm basically sandwiched between Brangelina. You know what I mean? Like, it's, oh, wow. Yeah, because that 3,000 to 300 is a much more competitive, you know, now I'm up with like major names. I did, um, I, I do have the distinctive honor of um, to, uh, saying that I actually made number one on IMDb. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, which was, I mean, I, I, listen, I was in one of the hottest shows on TV at the time and wore a basically naked dress to the red carpet. Like, that's how you do it. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, yeah, so uh, for sure, to your point, obviously I got some some more some eyeballs on me. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, as far as what you're saying about uh, doing, you know, uh, it being harder to when you don't have a ton of dialogue or or whatnot. Uh, I, you, that, that may be true. I think um, the fact is, if I may say so, I think the, uh, the, the casting is who really needs to be given all the props. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, because they cast me, but <laughs> so I am a little biased, but I mean, at the end of the day, they went and thought, okay, we need an improviser you know what i mean like an actress who is basically used to all be always being on like just sort of like because that's what that was like it, pepper was improv like i basically figured out who who this little person was you know her walk her talk her her mannerisms her, her you know uh gait you name it and then just played and I knew as long as I was basically being true to Schlitzy, that is the real life microcephalic after whom Pepper was modeled, as long as I was doing Schlitzy, I was doing what they hired me to do. And so that was really freeing as an actress to know like I wasn't I was never micromanaged you know directorially they never said oh on this I need you to say it like that or I need never nothing all I got was do schlitzy and so yeah I was I was basically improvising I was channeling this 1933 microcephalic star of, of uh Todd, Todd Browning's freaks and then just like letting it rip Wow. you know, until they call cut. And even then, sometimes I didn't quit. <laughs> well, you know, I've, I always was kind of thinking about uh, Zippy the pinhead from, mm. you know, that character I, from when I was right. a kid. And I'm going, wow, I wonder if that's where they got that from. But uh, you, you said it, the, the casting on that show was really, I mean, amazing. I, I have to say, as much as I love you know, Jessica Lang and Sarah Paulson's acting and Kathy Bates and all them. And mind you, I'm, I'm not taking away from from you at all, but that was named Peter Peter Evans. Is that his name? Evan Peters or Evan Peters. I mean, I'm sorry. We got that mixed up. No, but, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, when he played the different characters uh, like uh, Charles Manson and all those. Oh, yeah. I'm going, the casting for that. I mean, whoever did that was spot on because every one of you were perfect in in every one of them now granted I'm, I'm, we talked a little bit before we started um as it went on i mean some of the shows weren't quite as good as the other ones but that that happens i mean even i, I told you one of my favorite shows is the office there were some seasons where they weren't the best but i still watched 
because I, I don't know, I, I you get a a love for characters. Yeah. And so, I mean, even though you had Jessica Lang and and all these other ones that would play different characters, you still you just fell in love with them. And then, but you you ended up taking your character in different shows, and I I was like, God. I, I, you, were, you were just amazing. I'm sorry. You're just well, amazing. thank you. I, I mean, I can't take complete credit. Uh, you know, I'm, I just come when I'm called. So I was lucky enough for them to put Pepper back, you know, bring her back after the asylum uh, into Freak Show. Yeah. Um, and I, I suppose I may, I obviously had something to do with it. You know, they liked her enough to want to bring her back or rather you guys liked her enough. Um, I always credit the fans because the fact is people don't realize it, but there, there is someone at FX hired to just to watch social media and, you know, pay attention who's getting the likes who's getting the hits and oh it sure looks like you know pepper peppers what's up people are watching for pepper and so they want to give people whatever they want you know what i mean there's a reason like norman Reedus is never gonna die on walking dead like it's not yeah. a mystery you know what i mean like <laughs> the the population of like you know middle-aged women in the world would riot if if something were to happen to him so yeah, no you know <laughs> The yeah. fact is, you know, yeah, so I, you know, I did my part, but, you know, the fans did theirs and thankfully the, the network was paying attention. Well, uh, you know, we, uh, we fell in love with it from the first season. And then when, when you finally came on an asylum, I, I was one of those that had to Google who you were and I'm like, certainly something, this has got to be like, I don't, I don't know. I couldn't figure out how in the world they get somebody to look like that. And I looked and I saw your picture and I'm like, dear, look at this. <laughs> There's no way that's the same person. Cause you're just, I'm, I, you know, I don't want to sound offensive, but I mean, you're a very attractive woman and <laughs> for them to make you look like that, I'm like, God, they really had to do some makeup work. You know, I had a Comic-Con recently I was at and uh, had a, a friend from the uh, you know the outside world uh come and just you know sit with me while i at my table and he was like man like i've known you for years and yeah you're pretty you're you're fine you're <laughs> you're not like hard to look at but like <laughs> how many people come up to you on a daily you know in a given day and just tell you how beautiful you are like naomi it's insane like <laughs> you just sit here and they and they shower you with like these lovely compliments and it's true it's kind of crazy like no one ever told me i was beautiful till all of a sudden the whole world told me all at once and it's it's really nice i i'm not mad at it at all thank you oh well uh, you know i'm I it's wonder. making up for all the all the years in high school when <laughs> when nobody ever said said anything as much. You know, one thing <laughs> I was curious about because I mean I don't want to sound vain, but I, I don't even like a hair to be out of place when I go out in public. For them to make you look like that, did you worry that that might hurt your career in the long run? Well, first of all, I have terrible hair, so I, I guarantee I, it's not as bad as mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I think. First of all, again, as a character comedian, I'm I'm all about laughing at myself. I'm um, I I've never I'm definitely not one of those actresses trying to be pretty. If anything, it's worked out the other way for me. Right. For me, by virtue of being so ugly, people are constantly complimenting me for being pretty. So um, yeah, I've always, I mean, even since I was like, a, was a little girl, like playing house uh, or, or doctor, you know, I always wanted to be like the evil stepmom or the, you know, the Carilla DeVille, like the, uh, the like the, the villains, the like yeah. kind of ugly ones, the ones with like the dark underbelly. Those are the, the, the roles that always sort of appeal to me. Like, I, I don't know, I, I guess, but I'm also realistic at the end of the day. You know, when I first moved out to Hollywood, I looked at all these 
gorgeous girls. And I was like, you know what? I'm never going to get those parts. Like, and it's not that I'm, you know, I'm not pretty, but it's like, if they want a beautiful girl, they will throw a rock and hit like a dozen here. Like, yeah. so there's just no point in me even trying for that i might as well just do me and me is <laughs> like a an extreme character with crazy hair which you can shave if you you know pay me enough like i'm you know i have things to bring to the table that you know those pretty girls don't actually like you know if you need um a, a character an extreme character actress who uh with improv skills um who and uh, and theater background um you know that and, and you name it i'm your girl you know but um and yeah if you want to make me pretty i you know i can clean up like you know yeah. well <laughs> you know and it, I, I hope i make this sound right but for a lot of the women that are in Hollywood that are the, the the more glamorous, beautiful type, some of their performances kind of fall short to me. And the ones that have to, that, I mean, that are not as attractive, they seem like they work harder and the performances are a lot better. Like Kathy Bates, let's take her. I mean, she's not mm -hmm. the most prettiest woman in the world, but she puts a lot into her characters. And I mean, I think I I fell in love with her in misery. Mm. and yeah of course she's just got that something well the the way i see it is if all i want to see was pretty people i would watch i don't know desperate housewives or, or not even uh you know housewives of you name the city or um uh uh you'd watch my youtube you know, channel yeah beauty pageants <laughs> i don't know like like if i want to see beautiful people like there are shows for just that, but yeah. like that, that's not what I want to watch. Like I want to do the kind of work that I want to watch, which is real. I want to see, I want to watch real people and real people look like you. They look like me. They look, you know, they have scars and they have bags and they have uh, hairs out of place. And, yeah. and that is more interesting to me. So quite honestly, I mean, I understand why, why when you're watching a movie, they put, you know, they cast the more glamorous version of the real person in the role. I do. I mm -hmm. understand that. Cause if we're going to be paying to watch the person for two hours, we want to, you know, we want them to be visually pleasing. But in general, I, I, I'm just turned off when, when everyone's just so pretty that they don't, they don't even look like, like, like we all want to watch ourselves a little bit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's a reason why I am a sucker for like the sex in the cities and the, you know what I mean? Like that's my world. Like I'm a single lady who likes to brunch and, and talk about boys while I do it. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I want to see me it, it, when I go to the movies and and watch TV and when they all just look just you know like shellacked, I I can't relate. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's why you know I prefer say a a Mick Jagger over a John Lennon because Mick Jagger's got that rough kind of yeah you know, he's, he's like me he's not the greatest looking dude in the world but he's got some talent to him not that I'm talented but you know. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Mick Jagger got to live long enough to 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 get that those wrinkles and that age. Well, he's Poor John never Lennon. a good looking guy. <laughs> well, yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it, it, and I don't mean to disappoint any women out there, but um, and may he rest in peace. But Heath Ledger, I was never interested in Heath Ledger till he played the Joker. Yeah, he was and a was great performance. Joker. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I, I, I I mean, I've seen from Cesar Romero on up and he was by far my favorite Joker out of all of them. And that's that's saying a lot. Yeah, yeah, I um, I did love Joaquin Phoenix's uh, Joker. Was that good. was like a whole nother. There was like a dark there was an even grittier side there 
Um, I'm not taking away from Joaquin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Heath Ledger, I mean, there was something that was just that perfect side of psychotic that uh, to me, Joaquin Phoenix. I loved him in Brokeback Mountain. (laughs) I I confess I've never seen it. (gasps) What? (laughs) I've never seen it. <laughs> oh, it's it's a beautiful film. I it? recommend it. It might not be as a straight male. It may not be on on your radar, but I, just as I've a watched film RuPaul, buff, so you know it's okay. that doesn't bother me. <laughs> no, no, I think it's just. Well, you're a cowboy living in Texas, right? Yeah, well, I, I'm not gonna go <laughs> do something like that with one of my buddies. But, you know. That's okay. And I like Jake Gyllenhaal too. I think he's an awesome yeah. actor as well. And um, let's face it, he's not the, exactly the best looking dude in the world either. But I'm, I know a lot of women that would fight you on that. I, but... I'm sure there are. I'm sure there <laughs> are. But I mean, I'm not. I'm a dude, so I don't judge other guys very well. But still. Um, and, and I say I'm not I'm not taking away from any of their performances. Uh, I've seen a lot of stuff they've done. I just kind of preferred the the more evil characters, to be honest with you. Oh, same, always. And yeah, I, it's I weird that anyway. here I am, like <laughs> uh, always wanted to play the you know Carilla Devilles and the you know the evil uh, can uh, and yet you know. MTV has named Pepper like the number one good guy on you know in the AHS franchise among other there's like a like it seems like every top 10 there's always like Pepper's like the number one like sad sad soul the you know (laughs) the number one most innocent the number one most tragic the number one it's like yeah Mm -hmm. I don't know what else do you have going on? Well, you know, the pandemic's been a B, uh, uh, but I, um, well, I was lucky enough to work recently on the the new Horror Stories uh, spinoff series. Um, otherwise, I kept myself quite busy um, during the pandemic, which I, I understand did not happen in Texas, which <laughs> you're really lucky, let me tell you. Uh, but because it, it was no joke here in, in California. Uh, but um, and I shouldn't even use the past tense because that might, you know, anger s- some people. But um, uh, uh, yeah, I, I kept myself busy writing my new solo show. I have a couple one woman shows that I did prior to Pepper even. Um, and this one um, is a perfect companion piece. It's a uh, the third in the trilogy uh, that you know recounts the evolution of Naomi Grossman. Um, it's uh, a, you'll, this will sound familiar. It's a, um, a anthology show, a story, a anthology series of autobiographical tales of self-compromise, aptly titled American Horror Story. So that's a, a W-H-O-R-E. Oh. Okay. Uh, but the but the horror in this particular case <laughs> uh, is not promiscuous. Uh, that actually was in the last solo show. That was Carnival Knowledge. This this horror uh, refers to um, me being a hustler, hustler ah, horror. Okay. But you know, American hustler story doesn't have quite the same ring. True. But true. in certain definitions, you'll see, you know, hustler horror. They're kind of they're similar. You know, someone who's willing to do basically whatever they got to do to get what they want, and that's me. <laughs> ah. I from from the odd jobs I've held to the even my even odder taste in mates. I, I I've hustled my the entire way. So um yeah, I think it's going to be a really uh fan friendly um show. It's uh you know, fans will get to meet me pre pepper post pepper becoming pepper i mean it's a whole um it's it's fun i mean i just know the receptions i get at comic cons when i sit in front of a crowd and do a q and a i can only imagine how they're going to take to a, a, you know a 80 minutes of actual curated stories like you know these are it's it's going to be great 
Ah. It's really a matter of how and when and where and, and all that, which I, I don't, that I can't tell you. I don't know. But I know the avalanche is coming down the mountain. It is happening. <laughs> it is written. It is memorized. It is blocked. It's now it's just a matter of, um, you know, the idea is that it'll go to a, you know, a, uh, it'll be produced somehow as a one hour comedy special on some streaming platform. That's my dream. Okay. How that happens is uh, yet to be determined, but we'll get there. Oh, you're going to get there. You're going to oh, get there. Of course. I hope to get there this year, but this became the year that we just left the house. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I mean, it's baby steps, right? I mean, last year we didn't even do that. This year, now we're like, I'm at parties again. And like, <laughs> like there's, you know, it's like, wow. So, uh, so yeah, next year we'll, we'll this will happen next year. That's they, okay. Next year is next month. So they should make an American horror story called pandemic. And it's everybody killing themselves because they're stuck in the house together. <laughs> God, I mean, <laughs> I agree, although I don't want to watch it. Like I, 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 I know what you mean. That's one thing I got to say. I would wondered about that. I was like, are we going to see a whole like rash of, you know, television that is sort of about this time? And I'm like, I sure hope not. Cause I this will not is, watch it. I won't watch it either. I no, mean, I, I can't imagine what y'all went through with lockdowns and stuff. And is the, the little bit of time that we were Ugh. locked down compared to y'all. I, and I yeah. was, it still drove me nuts. And, and lo and behold, right when that happened is the first time I've ever seen over a foot of snow in this part of Texas. Oh my God. I was that not. in, that was March of last year. It was, um, I want to, what was it? January, February? I cannot remember. Um, I, I don't even want to remember. It was before March because it was before we moved. And, uh, wow. That, I've never seen it snow like that in Texas. It must have just felt like the apocalypse. Like, it's I mean, snow, I was excited, like, but then, yeah. but then the power grid shut down, and we had a couple hours with no electricity, and so you're underneath covers, and you got sweats on, and everything else. So, well, how and they, how do they do that up in like Minnesota and Wisconsin? Oh yeah, no, I agreed. <laughs> I'm sure they were laughing at you. Probably you know, <laughs> the same way when it rains in LA and everyone's like, I can't drive, you know, like it, it, heaven forbid you go on the roads when there's like a drop of rain. <laughs> yeah. We're just, we're so jaded. I mean, Texans, Californians, we're really lucky. We, we have, we benefit from pretty much, well, y'all have, it gets hot there, but you know, it's pretty perfect weather. A lot of the time, oh, most of the and, time it is. I mean, we, we of course have our hundred and plus, temperature days but yeah for yeah. the most part i mean 70s eight i mean 90s to me is nothing but then you get friends that come from boston or something i got a friend of mine from new jersey when he comes here and it's 80 degrees he's like dang how can y'all stand this heat i'm like this is mild dude <laughs> right <laughs> so what else do you like to do outside of the, the whole acting and everything um well i'm a avid yogi I uh -huh. go to yoga every day uh, and yeah, it's, it's a bit of an obsession. <laughs> but that's okay. That's, it's good. Yeah. Good obsession. I mean, listen, of all the things that I could obsess over, it's, you know, it keeps me fit. It grounds me. It, um, no, I mean, it's, it's great. Um, but I, I, yeah, I've been practicing diligently for about 22 years. Okay. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't, uh, I, I can literally f feel like before I've, before I practice for the day, like, I just don't even like that lady. Like, like I, I I'm such, I'm a better person after I've, you know, just centered myself and breathed and just worked it out. Like I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a whole other person. So it checks a lot of boxes for me. It's not just exercise. It's, it's therapy, it's mm -hmm. diversion. It's, um, I mean, yeah, it's, 
So that I, I that I do a lot of. Um, I am very social, so I love to I love to go to parties. I love to you know go to the theater and go to movies and go to screenings and. Um, and I'm pleased to say that that's finally back. Um, and uh, I love to travel. Uh, I've been very fortunate to do a lot of that in my life. Um, I mentioned that I lived in Argentina. Mm. Um, since then, my dad actually, he lives there. So I, um, which is interesting because it's totally coincidental. <laughs> my going and his going were have actually nothing to do with each other. Wow. But that's a whole other story. You'll have to see it in the show. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, you know, when I can travel internationally, I, I'm i all over it. Um, uh, although I also love to travel domestically as well. I, I've been to Texas, I think, three times just this year alone. Really? Yeah, I was in... Um, I was at the Houston Horror Film Festival. Okay. I'm, um, I unfortunately missed that. Yeah. Uh, you were the only one, though. I mean, I'm it was pretty sure. <laughs> packed. It, it was amazing. Um, I was almost in culture shock because this was like the, one of the first cons I'd been to since the pandemic. And all of a sudden, it was like, oh, my God, where all these people come from? Um, that was fabulous. Uh, then I went to the... Um, I went to a con in Brownsville, Texas. Oh, down in the which, valley. Down in the valley. Yep. Yep. Um, can't get too much further down. <laughs> uh, and then, um, shoot, where was the other one? I had one in Laredo that canceled. Oh, oh. El Paso. El, El Paso. Old El Paso. Okay. Yeah. So, but that's the beauty of Texas. Like, you know, in other states, I find, you know, promoters tend to get very possessive. Like, no we've got Naomi for in, in Florida, like, <laughs> you know, don't you dare. But like Texas, they're like, you're eight hours away. Like <laughs> knock yourself out. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I got around and even then I feel like there's, I've still, I've still never been to a con in Austin. Well, never you need to done come up Dallas. Here. I do. Well, they need, do they have a comic con there? They, they have several comic cons here. Um, actually got to meet Adrian Paul at one of them. There's a lot of, if anyone, if, if, you, if the promoter of the Austin comic con is listening, bring me out. I've got lots of friends and I've got family in Austin, yeah. uh, who I, I know they'd come, um, and, and come and see me. And I, I know, I, I mean, I, uh, again, it sounds gross when I say it, but I, I have confidence in my ability to draw people i oh, yeah. you know from australia to amish country where i know no one i still manage to you know get people out to see me so so yeah i don't see why not in austin the irony is yeah i've never done denver like literally really? born and raised there my entire high school would come out and yet nope i've never done a con in colorado i'm gonna have to make a couple of phone calls i think we need to get right? you out here. Um, I know. Because uh, let's see, uh, Danny and Trejo yet, and Zachary oh. Levi have been to cons out here. So, well, you know, I've always kind of been into pop culture kind of stuff. And, you know, there's, I, I'm also like a kid of the 70s. So, you know, I, I, anything from that era on up, I'm, I, I'm pretty stooped in it. I was a kid of the 70s as well, um, maybe a younger kid, but uh, the point is I am the opposite. I was never even exposed to pop culture until I left the nest. When we, um, growing up, my parents, it, it was very, it was kind of widely just believed that uh, the, the television was a boob tube yep. and it was, you know, rotting the brain. And so I remember while my mom would be, you know, teaching piano lessons in the other room, I would be sneaking, uh, you know, facts of life and uh, uh, <laughs> different strokes and the Cosby show. And um, I mean, and I remember she, she'd come in and whoo, click, turn it off. Like, Oh, nothing, mom. No, no, no. You know? So I, I was having to sneak that stuff. I remember when I came back from college, and they 
caught me uh, watching that movie Clueless. And I was, uh, the way I was able to justify it is I was like, but you guys, this was actually, this is based on a John Jane Austen book, you know? And then, oh, oh, like as long as it was somehow related to something highbrow, like it was okay. Ah, gotcha. um, but so yeah, but consequently, um, yeah, the, the friend's boyfriend, uh, he and I were like the dream team at like, um, you know, Trivial Pursuit. Like we, if we could have gone on Jeopardy, we would have just killed it because he knows everything like 1960 on, right? And I knew everything like 1700s or, you know, 1600s uh, up until then. Like I know all the weird like Baroque impressionism, like all the like, you know, all the, uh, everything that like, kids don't know or yeah. care about is what I know. And then, you know, so uh, we just sort of could fill in each other's holes. But well, if um, you like that kind of stuff, there is a YouTube channel and this guy doesn't have a whole lot of followers, but he has he does magic, but he talks about about history and he goes way back and it, it, it's weird kind of history mm -hmm. and it's called in the margins. The guy, I'm write is, that down. You 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 have to watch this guy, and the, I'll give you a quick example because I don't want to monopolize this on, on other stuff. But uh, he talked about the the history of the uh, the fairy tale of Humpty Dumpty, and it was actually based on something true, which was it was a cannon that sat on a wall on um, at a um, a castle, and when the castle got bombed, it fell and it broke to pieces and they couldn't put it back together. And there's a lot more to the story and I want to give the whole thing away, but that kind of stuff fascinates me. I love mm. history, love history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I do too. I mean, it's, uh, of all my favorite subjects is probably not my favorite, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I feel if anything blessed that I grew up in a household that really valued, um, yeah, history. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, did my parents create this monster who, you know, wanted to grow up to be on TV? <laughs> probably because they wouldn't even just let me watch it like perhaps it's hard to say like you know <laughs> there's something yeah. to be said for just like letting your kids do what they want because if you don't they may grow up and you know yeah uh, <laughs> retaliate in their own little way which i which i obviously have but it's you know it's worked out that's like <laughs> my my friends from church they you know, they isolated their children from everything. And then once their kids got old enough to move out, I mean, they went wild. I'm like, right. oh my God, they went even crazier than me from when I was a teenager. That blows the mind, but you're absolutely That's, right. You have to yeah. expose kids to certain things or, you know, you never know what can happen. So I'm going to have to make some calls and see if we can't get you here. Yeah, let's do it. I do know you've got really great food in Austin. That I know. I've eaten some great barbecue, a lot of really good like um, food trucks. Oh my God, uh, the food trucks are freaking amazing here. I know. I had a friend recently visiting here and I was like, oh, should we stop at that food truck? And he was like, you know, made a face like roach coach. What, what would you, I'm like, that is delicious. Like it that's really is. gonna be way better than any, yeah, totally. <laughs> In fact, um, in Waco, Texas, um, I don't know if you know who Chip and Joanna Gaines are. But they've got this place called the Silos, and they they have food trucks behind their place, so you can go in their little um, little eating area outside at the picnic tables and all that. And they've got wonderful food there. And of course, Austin, there's like parking lots dedicated just to food trucks. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh yes. my gosh. So yeah, any anything like, but the, Austin has great culture here, great music, great food, you name it. Austin's got it. It's one of the reasons why I fell in love with it and moved up here away from Houston. The, um, look at all the people that live here. 
you know, you've got your Willie Nelson, Matthew McConaughey, and oh, um, yeah. just keep going and going and going. And, and uh, it's a, one of the best places in Texas to be. Of course, I like the, the outside of Austin better than inside of Austin because there's just so much beauty around here, the hills and mm -hmm. the, the lakes and rivers. Mm -hmm. Then when you talked about being grounded, that's the first thing that popped in my head. When my wife and I need to get grounded, we go to the river and put our feet in the water. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like it. Which that's reminds it. me, I wanted to ask you one more question before I forget. Mm -hmm. Are you into meditation? Yes and no. I mean, yoga is a form of yoga of meditation. You know, it just it's a moving meditation. Um, I I want to be better at the you know what they call yoga nidra, like the just sitting quietly in a seated position or perhaps lying down and you know listening and uh, and meditating that way. That has been a challenge for me. I, I am very active. And so when I stop, <laughs> even if it's just to in a dark theater to watch a movie, I shut off. Like it yeah. is not uncommon for me to fall asleep in a film. And I mean, even in my own movies, I, I will check out really? and people are like, wake up. What are you doing? You're on TV. Like, but it's just, it's like, I never just stop like that, you know, and sit in the dark. And so, yeah, it's, I, for the most part, always fall asleep in um, actual meditation. Mm. Um, and that's why the moving meditation, the yoga asana is something that is, I've been just more successful with, but um, I, I, I want to get better at it. I know it's, I I've seen it at work. I see, I, I have friends that are really into it and they are clearly superior people to those who don't, <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean? Like they yeah, exactly have what you mean. a, they have a demeanor. They're able to, you know, uh, they're uh, less reactive, uh, more reflective, uh, compassionate, receptive. They're all the things that I, I want to be, you know, when I grow up and, um, th that make us better people. And so I do, I see the value. Um, I'm just not, I'm not great at it. <laughs> yeah. That, well, I, I do have friends that are into it and I, I get tips from them and I try to do it as often as I can like you, you know, I have to kind of de-stress and not to be so reactionary. I'm a lot better than what I was when I was younger. That's for sure. Mm. And, uh, you know, have having gone through, you know, the whole depression and, and anxiety and all that, getting off the medications and doing meditation is the, like the best thing I've ever done in my life. Mm. I'm not surprised. So I'm not surprised only. Yeah. And if you're interested in any of that kind of stuff, uh, there's a shaman. His name is Copal da Selva. And um, you should, should look him up on, um, I don't know if you have Facebook or not, but he is on Facebook. And he he has sessions and stuff that he does. And uh, I guarantee you'd get a lot from him. Is that Copal? C-O-P-A-L. And then da Selva, D-E-S-A-L-V-A. -S okay. I will. I'll look that up. Yeah. Awesome. Tell, tell him that I recommend you. Maybe he'll give me uh, his outside lessons for free. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. I'm teasing. Sounds good. I'm teasing. But, uh, you know, I look forward to your, your projects in the future. And uh, I hope you do get out here. And if, if you do, I mean, there's plenty of places around here to, uh, to visit, to, to de-stress and get away from all of it but they're, they're they have the horror cons and they have the comic cons things like that here and um they're all over in austin and surrounding areas and um i'll, I'll definitely you know put your name out there and i was if, gonna say it's very easy uh you know uh, if you if you and or your listeners uh, will just um uh, you know, on their, on their Facebook pages or whatever, just drop my name, say, you know, 
Naomi Grossman just was a guest on my show and uh, we'd love to see her around these parts. And I'm, that's all it takes. Plant the seed. I guarantee it'll get some likes. It'll start to grow. And, uh, and yeah, yep, I don't know. Have you we'll considered, manifest it. have you considered <laughs> maybe a paranormal con? Um, sure. I mean, listen, I'm open to have all anything, but, uh, the closest I've done to like paranormal stuff was when I, I used to work on, um, uh, sci-fi network, um, destination truth, uh, with Josh Gates. Oh, I love Josh Gates. <laughs> we travel all over the world. Um, I was mostly, I was like the South America girl. We'd always, okay. cause that's why they hired me. I was kind of the fixer. I would speak spanish or portuguese uh depending on where we were and um you know kind of the on-air translator person and um anyway that was my role there but um so yeah i mean i've like looked for chupacabras and um you know n you name the mystical creature paranormal whatever Kukui. Uh, <laughs> yeah i'm but in general I mean, I, I live in a haunted house. We haven't had, really? uh, yeah, every now and then something paranormal will happen actually right here in this room during, you know, while we're uh, uh, broadcasting here, but nothing so far. My, my friendly ghost, Peter, doesn't, he doesn't perform on cue. So I apologize. Oh, um, well, I've yeah. also since um, I've actually had the lights like, changed out like i <laughs> so um because i i couldn't figure it out i couldn't tell if it was you know just loose electrical wiring or or perhaps a you know actual uh paranormal activity but oh wow <laughs> uh i have to talk to you when we finish the interview oh. <laughs> but uh do you have any advice that you'd like to give the folks out there if they want to get into you know just chasing their dreams in general mm, okay yeah um put you on the spot sure sure <laughs> sure no i mean i just gave this exact advice to a girlfriend of mine <laughs> she's uh looking to um get a new job and she's kind of weighing like the benefits for the pros the cons the, 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 the. and and my advice to her was like okay forget the 401k, forget the hours, forget the this, forget the that. What, what do you think of the actual work, right? The, the, what you're going to be paid to, what you're going to be spending your time doing because your time is your most valuable asset ever. So, you know, people, I think often, especially those getting into entertainment are seduced by, you know, the red carpets and the magazine spreads and the, guess what? None of that is guaranteed. It, you could work in this industry forever and never do any of that. You got to be thinking about what you're going to be doing day in and day out. And does that appeal to you? Does, does, uh, you know, creating content, you know, um, uh, whether or not you have you get hits online and or you know you might just be competing for hits against cat videos like would you <laughs> still be doing it if all you were getting was you know the 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 leftover hits from the cat video like that's that's what i mean like you have to love the work True. not the possible perks you know you know all the like bells and whistles that may or may not come along with it it's the it's the actual grind. And the fact is, I love the grind. I, I, I'm excited when I get to get an audition. It means I get to be someone else today. You know, I get to, um, play it's, it's my chance to do what I used to do when I was, you know, playing house or doctor, you know, as a little girl, I only this now I'm a, now I'm an actual doctor or, <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and so I think again, if you, you, you always gotta, at the end of the day, you've got to be having fun. Like life is too short. True. And if you hate what you do, well then do something else. And that includes with acting. Cause there's been times where 
I was not having fun. This was, this was hard. I was, you know, it, it's, I basically, I'm, a, I'm rejected on a daily basis. You know, I auditioned yesterday, callbacks for today, evidently didn't get one. I, but I, you know, I can't let that get me down. Um, when you do, well, then you need to seriously look inside because you may not, maybe you're not doing the right thing. Like the fact is like, especially what I've chosen to do with my life, it is, I am professionally being rejected. Like I am basically interviewing for a living. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I only get paid for a very, very small fraction of the work I actually do. Um, so all the more reason why I better love it, you know, yeah. and again, love the work, not, you know, the fan art that you may get or the, you know, podcasts that may come of it, because that's that's not sustainable. That's not going to, you know, get you through. It's it's what you're going to be spending your time doing. Yeah, true. Very true. Very, well, very sound advice. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. I appreciate your time. Of course. Thank you for coming on. And I also want to thank everyone that's either watching or listening to us. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for dropping by. I hope you come back. For those that are regular to the channel, uh, thank you for your support. And please continue to spread the word. So I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, until the next one, everyone, please take care. God bless and peace. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.